Good morning, traders and investors. My name is Roger Scott, and I'm the senior strategist for Wealth Press. Today is Thursday. It's April 7th. It's about 7.55 in the morning. The market's going to open up in about an hour and 34 minutes, to be exact. Now, today, we're having a little bit of a different bias in the morning. The NASDAQ 100 is actually higher instead of lower by God knows how much. It's been just taking a dump last few days. The Dow's kind of flat, and the S&P, as usual, is meeting us in between. Now, typically, I would put some attention to this volatility, but the markets have been really, really, really volatile. Matter of fact, I wanted to show you the volatility on the Dow Jones just to show you the kind of volatility, the ATR level. The ATR, let me just put it on here. There it is, average true range, 10 days. The ATR, which has been actually going down, the ATR went as high as 700 points per day on the Dow. Now it's at 400 and, uh, 420 points on the day. But I mean, look at this, this is crazy. And if you look back, this is six months, if you look back, the typical volatility on the Dow is 300 points, it peaks at 400. Um, but this is just insanity. This is just insanity. Six, seven hundred points. The po the bottom line is it looks like volatility is starting to cool off, which means, which means if price action volatility is coming off, that means actual volatility via the VIX is going to be coming off as well. They're usually reverting. They're usually uh, in sync because volatility typically means uh, more gyrations within the market. The bottom line is VIX is near 21, 22. It's sort of near fear level, but not too much, especially in light of what we're seeing right now in the market. Um, looking at the bond market, we had the minutes yesterday, and I'll go over the minutes in just a minute. Get it? I'll go over the minutes in just a minute. But um, And the minutes signaled that the Fed is going to get more aggressive, but the bond market didn't really fall off the cliff, which again leads me to believe that most of what's happening in the bond market is priced into the market as we speak, which means there's a good chance bonds will revert a bit and maybe uh, break out above the 50-day moving average where I would like to sell it before it goes down once again. Now, in terms of news, we've got jobless claims and we've got James Bullard speaking. The jobless claims numbers have been fairly steady. There haven't been any major gyrations in it. As you can see here, the four week moving average is at 2,000, 208,000. And we're looking for the number to be between 200 and 211,000. So again, nothing really major there unless the number is really out of whack and nobody's expecting it, that to be the case. Um, today's not gonna be a major uh, event for the for Fed data. Now, let's talk a little bit about global economy, a lot to talk about. Uh, Fed comments indicating that the Federal Reserve intends to move aggressively to tackle inflation. Finally, a year and a half, they don't, they don't do anything. Finally, they're ready. But I believe they're ready now because they, fear, they feel, not fear, they feel that COVID is behind us or the, the, the biggest impact of COVID is behind for the U.S. I think they were waiting for that. Oil prices were higher. Fed comments have added to investors unease over the war in Ukraine, COVID outbreak in China, and persistent inflation. I mean, we're, we've just got it all right now. Minutes from the meeting last month showed policymakers agreed to begin cutting Fed's stockpile of treasuries and mortgage-backed securities by $95 billion a month starting in May. That's more than investors expected and nearly double the pace that last time the Fed shrank its balance sheet. We'll see how it goes. Chinese markets declined despite state media reports that the country's top economic official promised support for the economy as it battles its worst COVID outbreak so far. Hard to believe, and I'm hoping it's not going to hit U.S. China's contending with slumping growth. The U.S. central bank is moving to cool inflation by reversing low interest rates and the extraordinary support it began providing for the economy two years ago when the pandemic knocked the economy into a recession or knocked the market's socks off. A faster reduction in the balance sheet will help push up longer term rates, although they haven't really been moving that much, but also raising borrowing costs, which may impact the housing market. Higher rates tend to reduce price to earnings of stocks, especially higher valuation stocks. Infl inflation is running at a four decade high and threatens to crimp economic growth. Higher prices on everything from food to clothing have raised major concerns with consumers who eventually want to pull back on spending, which will negatively impact the economy. Russia's invasion of Ukraine has not helped the situation and it has pushed gas prices and commodity prices such as wheat and nickel to historic highs. Crude oil fell yesterday 5.6%, but is still 30% higher. Now, 
looking at each individual sector, which we will do right now, let me show you each individual sector. As you could see here, energy and utilities and consumer staples, the three most defensive uh, assets are still leading on a cumulative basis. When we look at a monthly basis, utilities, real estate, and basic materials and consumer discretionary is coming up. But again, keep in mind, NASDAQ right now is going through some gyrations and the market could, could potentially undo a lot of the rally that we've seen in the last couple of weeks, although I don't think that's gonna happen because I think the worst is already priced into this market. And I think we're gonna be kind of sticking near this area and possibly go higher and gyrate over the next few days. The S&P, which is what we need to pay attention to right now, is literally, literally at the 200 day moving average. And the question is, is it gonna revert lower or is it gonna move higher? I believe that after this move that we've had here, this two week move, the market needs a little bit time to cool off. And I think what's happening now is just a normal fluctuation and I think we are going to be going higher. Um, if you're looking at the energy sector, which has been which has been the leading sector, it's still congesting and it's still moving sideways. This is a consolidation. This is a wait and see pattern. We don't know what's going to happen in the near future, so we're kind of waiting right now. Um, if you look at the sectors visually, which I did yesterday extensively, look at this. Utilities is overbought right now. Uh, real estate is breaking up to the upside, which is very positive, especially in light of the fact that interest rates are going higher. I think basic materials, I think this is just a little blip and we're gonna go back to this uh, congestion. Healthcare is breaking out. I mean, look at this, healthcare and real estate and utilities, they're breaking out higher. Consumer discretionary looks like it's gonna fill this gap and kind of congest for a little bit. Communication services looks like it's gonna do the same, although I wouldn't be holding my breath. The sector has been really weak. Um, if you look at communication services, discretionary and tech, they all look exactly the same. So the question is, are they going to fill this gap or not? Until they fill this gap, I'm not going to be very bullish on these stocks. Consumer staples, as I told you it would, is breaking out finally. Um, industrial stocks look like they're going to come back. I'm actually starting to get bullish on them once again. And it looks like they're the closest ones to filling this gap. Financial stocks look like they're ready to go higher and energy looks like it's gonna keep consolidating. Now, because we're trading ETFs and we're looking at ETFs, in my opinion, right now, the best ETF you can do is, I know it's, it's a, I know I've been recommending it quite a bit, but I like the energy ETF and I like the financial ETF. The reason I like the financial ETF because with rates going higher, I think most of the downside is already priced in and I would wait till we're above the 200 day moving average, but I really, really like the financials. And again, financials is one of the few sectors that actually rises with rates going higher. So if you're looking at the financial sector and we're long the financial sector right now, you can go all the way to June, 72 days left. You got plenty of times left. And I would go to the 39, 38 option. You got lots of open interest and I wouldn't even go to 39. I would stick with the 38. It's less than two bucks, it's like a dollar 40. Um, you could do the 37, plenty, plenty of liquidity, plenty of open interest. So anywhere from 37 to 39, I would actually go with the 37 because they're so damn cheap right now. Uh, can't go wrong with that. And you're a little bit in the money. And if you want to do the energy ETF, then I would also, I would probably go to uh, a little further on the energy one. And because there may be a long-term trend developing that may take us a little higher. And on that one, I would probably go to the 77 or actually 78, it's five bucks. And you can offset that one with the 85. You can buy the 77 and you could sell the 85s and uh, get like 40% off and it's a good spread. So you buy the 77, you sell the 85s. You can even buy the 77s and sell the 81s, but I would go 77s, 85s. Not, a, not an expensive spread and a pretty good one. Now, right now, right now, what I would be watching very, very closely is the bond market and how the bond market is going to react to what the Fed has been saying. If the, if the bond market stops going lower, that means the price, the interest rate uh, schedule that the Fed is planning is already priced into this market. 
And that may be bullish for the stock market, especially in light of the fact that we have earnings coming up. And I'll give you an earnings update today later if you're in my VIP program. But the bottom line is keep your eye on the bond market. Keep your eye on consumer staples. Very, very important. Keep your eye on consumer staples. Keep your eye on the bond market. If, if consumer staples keeps going up and the bond market keeps going down, that's weaker for the, for the stock market overall. Uh, I mean, th these are defensive sectors. If the bond market starts moving higher and bonds and uh, um, consumer staples start moving lower, that's very, very positive for non-defensive stocks such as consumer discretionary. And if you start seeing consumer discretionary, which has lost its shirt, come back up to the uh, 192 level, we're going to be back in play. Now, now, before I let you go, I've got something important for you, something really educational and something I really need you to pay attention to. Folks, we're all been there before, all of us. Traders buy the dip in their favorite stocks, right? But then that dip turns into a correction and that correction turns into a crash. It's happened before. All of a sudden, two, three months of gains are wiped out in two or three days. This is what we call a blowing up an account situation. And we see new traders make this mistake all the time. The key here is using a built-in hedge, especially in this crazy volatility that I just showed you. The hedge allows us to take full advantage of moves higher. And when the market crash finally does come, we're more protected. Matter of fact, we made out like bandits with this exact same hedge during the COVID crash. The markets crashed hard and we made, I think, 64% for that week or two week rotation. And again, this hedge allows us to take full advantage of moves higher. And when the market crash finally comes, we're more protected. Click the link below to watch my rotational strategy and how it can help you during these tough volatile times. And it's highly educational. It'll teach you which sectors are bullish in a bull market, which sectors are, are in play during a neutral market, uh, which sectors rise during a bull phase, bear phase. There is so much education there. I don't even know how to explain it to you. It's full of content. Follow the link below. Get in on it now. And tomorrow, weekly recap, biggest winners, biggest losers of the week, and what to expect. And if you guys are getting value out of these videos, send me some love letters. Support at marketgeeks.com. Follow the link below this video to, to check out my class. There's no cost, no monkey business, no catch. And if you're on YouTube, go to the Wealth Press YouTube channel. You'll find my videos there. Like them, subscribe to them, and follow the link to check out my training session. You guys are going to love it. It's it's really good. It's over an hour and it's all meat and potatoes, no fluff. And I hope you're liking these videos. Bye.